This is the second video in the test 3 review and it covers material on inverse functions and inverse circular functions. In this first question, we're given a graph of a function and we're asked if the function is one-to-one. -one. Before we answer this, let's consider our definition of a one-to-one -one function. So a function is one-to-one -one if each x goes to one y value and each y corresponds to only one x value. So there is a one-to-one -one relationship between our x's and our y's. So in order to test this when we're given a graph, what we can do is perform the horizontal line test. So with the horizontal line test, we draw horizontal lines through the graph, and if it crosses at more than one point, then it is not one-to-one. -one. So we're going to draw our horizontal line we can do it at a couple different points um, just to make sure that it's accurate. So we've drawn our horizontal line. It only crosses the graph at what they only cross the graph at one point, so crosses at one point only. And so our function is one to one. One to one. In this question, we're given the function 2x cubed plus 5, and we're asked whether or not it's 1 to 1. So whenever you're given a question like this, what you can do is graph your function, and then, again, we'll perform the horizontal line test. So I'm just going to draw a rough graph. This is not accurate. It's just to give you an idea of what the graph would look like. So if we have 2x cubed plus 3 equals 5, we're going to have something that looks a little bit like this. Um, or, sorry, let's get that a little bit better. It looks a little like that. So, if we were to draw horizontal lines through the graph, we would see that it doesn't cross more than once. And so, yes, this function is one-to-one. -one. In this question, we're given a set of ordered pairs, and we're asked to find the inverse. So when you're working with a set of ordered pairs and you need to find the inverse, you're going to take your point x, y, and you're just going to interchange your x and y coordinates, and they'll become y, x, and that gives you your f inverse. So let's go ahead and do that. So f inverse would be equal to, so we start with 4, 5, we just change those. So we have 5, 4, and then we get negative 6, negative 7, and negative 4, negative 2. And that's our answer for f inverse. Here we're given a set of ordered pairs and we're asked to figure out if it's one-to-one. -one. So when you're given a set of ordered pairs and you need to see if it's one-to-one, -one, you have to see if each x goes to only one y and each y goes with only one x. So we can check through our pairs. So here we have 5, 1, 4, 3, 2, 7, and 6, 1. But right here we have our problem, our x value where x equals 5, y equals 1, and where x equals 6, y equals 1. So this violates our condition for 1 to 1, and so this function is not 1 to 1. In this problem, we're given the function f of x equals 7x minus 9, and we're asked to find f inverse of x. So whenever we're given a function and we need to find the inverse, what we're going to do is we'll s switch x and y and then solve for x. Now remember to do this, the function must be 1 to 1. 
However, we can sort of just see that this is just going to produce a line, which won't give us any issues for it being one to one. Generally, if something is strictly increasing or strictly decreasing over its domain, then it's going to be one to one. So, and if you think about it to the graph of a line, that's going to pass the horizontal line test, no problem. So, let's go ahead and find our inverse. So we start off with 7x minus 9, or y equals 7x minus 9. So we switch our x and y, and we have x equals 7y minus 9. And we, up here it said solve for x, I meant to solve for y. So let's go ahead and solve for y. So x plus 9 equals 7y. And then we get down to y equals x plus 9 over 7. So f inverse of x equals x plus 9 divided by 7. So here we're given a graph and we're asked to graph the inverse. So we would say this is our f of x and we want to graph f inverse of x. So... Typically, if we have a, b on x, a, b is on x, then b, a is on the graph of f inverse of x. So all we need to do to graph f inverse is reflect x, or reflect our graph for f of x over the line y equals x. So we're going to do that down here real quick. Let me draw our graph. Okay. So we have our initial graph. And we need to just reflect it over the line y equals x. So remember, this is just a rough sketch. So I'll draw my line at y equals x. And then we're reflecting over. And that's going to look something like that where this is our f of x, and in blue we have our f inverse of x. In this problem, we're asked to find the exact value of sine inverse of root 3 over 2. So, if we're looking for sine inverse root 3 over 2, then we're looking for the angle theta such that sine of theta equals the negative square root of 3 over 2. It's also important to remember that with sine inverse, our answer is going to have to be restricted to the interval negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So if you were to look at a graph of the inverse sine of negative x, you would see that negative root 3 over 2 as our x value occurs at negative pi over 3. You may also remember just from your unit circle or just the general trig values that you're supposed to um, know at this point that this is the angle that you're going to need. So we know then that sine inverse of negative root 3 over 2 is equal to negative pi over 3, which goes with sine of pi, negative pi over 3 equals negative root 3 over 2. So these can be solved looking at graphs, or they can also be solved if you just have a good concept of your memorizing your trig values. In this question, we're asked to find the exact value for cosine inverse of 1, which, similar to our previous problem, means we're looking for an angle theta such that cosine of theta equals 1. So with inverse cosine, we're restricted to the interval 0 to pi, so we know that our answer has to fall somewhere in there. So we're looking for an angle between 0 and pi that would give us cosine theta equals 1. So again, you could either look at the graph of cosine inverse of x and see that where x is 1, y is equal to 0, or if you just remember your trig values, you know that cosine of 0 equals 1. So cosine inverse of 1 would equal 0, and that's then 1 is our answer.
or rather zero is our answer, I guess. In this problem, we're asked to find the exact value of cosecant inverse of negative two. So with this problem, it's important to remember that cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So our inverse cosecant negative one of negative two can actually be rewritten as sine inverse of negative one half. So now we're looking for theta such that sine of theta equals negative one half. And just from knowing our unit circle, we know that sine of negative pi over six equals negative one half. So we know that then that cosecant inverse of negative two would be equal to negative pi over six. Remember, with sine, we're restricted to the interval negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 when we're working with our inverse. But right here we have our final answer. In this problem, we're asked to find the exact value of arc secant of negative 2 root 3 over 3. So first of all, remember that arc secant is the same thing as secant inverse. And then we also want to remember that secant and cosecant are reciprocal functions. So arc secant of negative 2 root 3 over 3 is equal to arc cosine of 3 or negative 3 over 2 root 3. So we can go ahead and solve for that. But first, we're going to need to rationalize our denominator. So we've got negative 3 over 2 root 3. So we can multiply that by root 3 over root 3, which would give us negative 3 root 3 over 6, which we can simplify to negative root 3 over 2. So we're looking at arc cosine of negative root 3 over 2. And remember that this has to be on the interval from 0 to pi. And so the value for that that works would be arc cosine of negative root 3 over 2 equals 5 pi over 6. So arc secant of negative 2 root 3 over 3 is 5 pi over 6. In this problem, we're given tangent arc sine of root 3 over 2, and we're asked to find the exact value as our answer. So we can treat this problem in two parts. So first, we're going to worry about what our arc sine of root 3 over 2 is. So arc sine root 3 over 2, we know that um, sine of pi over 3 equals root 3 over 2. So our answer to that is going to be pi over 3. So now we have this new problem. We have tangent of pi over 3, and that's pretty easy to solve. We know that tangent of pi over 3 is just equal to the square root of 3. So all you have to do with this problem is just split it into two pieces and solve it that way. And you get your final answer of the square root of 3. So just a quick summary of what we've covered in this video and what you'll need to know for the test. So remember that if a function is 1 to 1, then each x goes to only one y, and each y goes to only one x. In order to test if something is 1 to 1, we can perform the horizontal line test. And if it crosses at more than one spot, then it is not 1 to 1, so crosses at more than one spot, then it's not one-to-one. -one. So anytime you're given a problem asked if the function's one-to-one, -one, you can typically just graph it. Also, if you're looking to find f inverse of x, you're going to want to switch your x and y, switch x and y, and solve for y. With regards to inverse trig functions, remember that your sine inverse is going to be restricted from 
negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 and your cosine inverse is going to be restricted from 0 to pi. And from there you can use those intervals to figure out what it's going to look like if you're doing your inverse um, or your reciprocal function, so your cosecant, secant, cotangent, and you can also figure out what interval tangent must lay on. So this is the end of the second video for your test three review. There's going to be one more video, and as always, if you'd like more practice with this type of problem, you can just get online onto my math lab and look at the test three review.